Well, one of the big games over the weekend, it was a great victory too for Essendon over Port Adelaide by two points. They hung on. I thought that they were going to get overrun in that last quarter, Lingy, but they found enough. They tightened up the areas of their game that they needed to. They've had a lot of close finishes so far this season. They hadn't been able to get the job done, but one young bloke, Dyson Heppel, really stood up under that pressure and showed some leadership. Yeah, well, you can see the lessons that uh, Essendon have learned, that, and that's just a class goal by Dyson Heppel. He'd been well held by Kane Corns for most of the night, but just that composure amongst a lot of traffic there to finish off and kick a huge goal for his team. And then for the Bombers to hold on and, uh, and get that close win, that's going to fill them with a bit of belief because they have had a few close losses this year. Adelaide's pressure was really good against Port Adelaide the week before. It was almost yeah. like Essendon had the same game plan against Port Adelaide on Saturday night as well, Duck. And their defensive pressure really was probably the thing that set this game and this win up for them. Yeah, well, this is where uh, Port Adelaide was so good, obviously, in the first 13 or so rounds. But this is where it's the defensive pressure and the turnovers that uh, all of a sudden now, Port Adelaide, you see here, just starting to go to some 50-50s and not quite hitting the target. And their skills, you know, I mean, you see here, this one here, and that was uh, obviously the critical one late in the quarter that uh, ended up costing them, costing them the game. It was almost like both teams, they loved to go through the corridor, but yeah. defensively they both wanted to own the corridor and you can see uh, Port Adelaide's uh, defensive half turnovers obviously ranked one uh, early on in the season and uh, it's just dropped off that little bit and conceding. You see they've conceded 35 mm -hmm. points from those defensive half turnovers. I think teams are now onto the fact that Port just want to keep going in there as yep. much as they possibly can. It was a fascinating game too, the way they tried to open it up right at the end, that last quarter, Port Adelaide, and, and run Essendon off their legs and probably uh, with the fact that they believe that they're such a powerful run side, endurance-wise as well, they were going to get over the top of them. And there's a little little bit of bite play, Tim, Robbie Gray and uh, <laughs> Chappie, who uh, we know that Chappie it's likes history, a yeah. little bit of... Uh, yeah, there is a little bit of history. Uh, that was from... Uh, last year's semi-final. Yeah, the semi-final. And Chappie's last game with the Cats, that so one, because he got a week. Do you honestly think players hold grudges? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, he's lucky that uh, left missed. Oh, and that, uh, I just reckon Robbie Gray's lucky that left me. Well, that's what I mean. Well, they're both lucky because Chappie would be having a holiday if it connected. But uh, you don't mind a little bit of that, Tim. Uh, they've become great innovators too, Port Adelaide. I love the way they play. I think most people love the way they yep. play. But also some of the stuff they're doing off the ground. They introduced something new again on Saturday night. Now, just listen to this. This is uh, what is going to be part of what they sing at home games, I think, when they wave their flag. Yep. Just have a listen to this. I thought it was great on Saturday night. Duck, you would have joined in had you been there. Never tear us apart. I would have loved to be there, Tim. <laughs> I, I was down on the boundary, obviously. It was great. It was terrific. Fantastic yeah. atmosphere. I know they're the, the best in the world at doing it a, a Liverpool with you'll never walk alone, but uh, it was great that Port Adelaide did that. It really started the uh, started the game off well. Yeah, and no, I think it's a great innovation. Uh, talking about uh, never tear us apart, I thought I was going to have to send you to the three-quarter time huddle and tear Bomber Thompson apart from Jake Melksham. Now... <laughs> You'd know better than anybody here what this was all about. This and he wasn't inviting him for an afternoon tea, was he? No, this is sending you just a few old shivers down the <laughs> spine watching Bomber do that. Very good at doing that, Bomber. Just pulling a player aside and making sure that he's clear exactly what that player needs to go and do. Now, it, he never sprays it, never goes overboard, but that wasn't a friendly conversation. No. They weren't talking about the weather or anything like that, but just making sure Jake Melcham knew exactly what the team needed from him. He was very serious the other night from start to finish. He was. I mean, in all his interviews, I mean, his body language and everything was different, don't you think? Yeah, it was, and uh, and I think he's he's often spoken about the fact that um, he's trying to bring some fun to the players amongst everything that's going on. I think he realised that the most fun thing you can possibly do is win, so yeah, he wants exactly. the team to win. Certainly had his game face on.